today we're going to be taking a look at this little gem right here now i cannot tell you what that says on the front i can't read it but i do know it's by arjuna cloud engineer and i was not expecting this device to come i hadn't been emailed about it or anything i had absolutely no information whatsoever about it but i did find out that it is by ace vape and it was sent to me for the purpose of this review if we go ahead and flip the back box around now i normally don't flip the box over in my videos but all of the information here is on the back and because I don't know anything about this device, I do want to go ahead and read it off. So what is included in here is the Gandawa Competition Mod and the Pazapati Competition RDA, your drip tip, your manual card, your composition coils, your battery adapter, and your spare kit and tools, along with any what they're calling exclusive pouch. And down here at the bottom is the Instagram handle of the designer. That's going to be Arjuna Cloud Engineer. And according to the information that I received, Arjuna is a famous Indonesian designer and I'm not going to try to pronounce their name because I do not want to disrespect them and butcher it but that's where this is designed. Now it is manufactured by Ace Vape. So even though designed in Indonesia, it is manufactured in China. Let's go ahead and open it up. Now the case is made of plastic. It is a hard case. It has these little clips on the sides here that I have trouble with, but I have trouble with it because I have nails and my nails always get in the way of things. But when you open up the case there, you can see you do have these foam padding. The mod and the RDA are pre-assembled in this velvet pouch. Underneath that, you have some information. I was so happy to see that they put this information inside the box for me. So you have the Ace Vape official in Arjuna Cloud Engineer. This is a collaboration. So it says we made this RDA for Arjuna to match up his Gandawa. Top to bottom airflow will eliminate leaking problem at bottom airflow RDA. And we do have some authenticity check there for it. And if we switch it over to the other side, if my camera is not way overexposed there, hopefully that comes up for you guys. But you can see the specs of the RDA. So then let's get to the Gondawa. So the Gondawa is an 18650-2700 or 21700 mechanical mod featuring the best material. It has a 510 hybrid non-detachable. So make sure your atomizer's positive pin protrudes past the connector body. I really do like that they put importance on that. The body is made out of pure solid copper with an ergonomic design. Now this says Colette Connection. So I'm not sure what they mean by Colette Connection, but I have went ahead and looked at this mod and looked at the contact and we'll do that up close here in a minute. But it says the Colette Connection is self-cleaning, allows the mod to achieve the perfect contact, reducing transfer resistance and increasing the beast performance. Okay. Basically what I think they're saying there is that it is a constant contact button the button has no spring or magnet mechanism and it will give you a long lasting and durable performance clean the contact at least twice a week bottom cap to secure everything up together and then here we have the little accessories pouch your accessory pouch does come with spare post screws for the rda spare o-rings for the rda an allen key tool two coils and a chuff cap for the rda so now getting into the meat and potatoes, here is the Arjuna kit. Now I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure how Arjuna is pronounced, but it does say Arjuna in big letters right here. And then it has that down there at the bottom. I'm not really sure what that word is. I, I want to say it says minor, but I don't think that's what it says. But here it is on the outside. So you can see I have the black Cerakoted device. And then of course it is milled out to show the copper underneath where the writing is. Here is the Pazopati RDA on top. And what were they calling this mech mod? The Gandawa? The Gandawa mech mod. So we can go ahead and unscrew the RDA. And I must say the RDA actually really does intrigue me. So we are going to go over the RDA first. We'll unscrew it here. And I do like how they matched it up. Now, this is completely non-removable. It is 
just decoration there but the decoration matches up with the rda which i really do like and then you have the drip tip now the drip tip is a standard 810 it does have an o-ring on the inside the drip tip is metal painted black and then has this ultim donut on the top Taking a look at the bottom, the RDA is 25 millimeters in diameter. You can see it has a serial number, Ace Vape Tech Pazapati RDA by Arjuna. If we flip it over to the side, you can see it has a gold-plated brass 510 pin that does protrude really far for hybrid mech use. Let me go ahead and screw this down here on my little stand so I can show you the airflow. So it is dual top airflow. Now top meaning that the outside of the airflow is coming from the top. However, when we get inside, I'll show you how it's bottom airflow actually. So the top, bottom, top, down, whatever airflow you wanna see is dual airflow. And whatever you adjust on one side, it will adjust on the other. So now I've went ahead and fully disassembled the RDA's top cap. So it is in several pieces. Your airflow control is just this little ring here below that you have a little o-ring and there is a little copper ring that is free floating there but this part is stationary there's no other moving parts to it go ahead and place this back on o-rings feel nice and tight now they have no e-liquid on them or anything so they may loosen up over time i'll definitely let you know how it feels once it loosens up. So put that back on there. And now let's go ahead and flip it over. And I'm gonna zoom in for you. So zooming into the top cap, now we can see how the airflow works. It is milled out in there and it is a nice conical shape. But as you can see, there are these slots on either side in there and that's gonna match up with the airflow on the outside. The airflow travels down these slots. And as you can see, they're kind of like little tracks. And the reason why those little tracks are there is because if we take a look at the deck, now the deck is black and gold, so it may not come up very easily on camera, but if we tip it to the side there, you can see your bottom airflow tubes there. And if we tip it to this side, you can see there is a hole on the outside of that airflow tube. And when we line up the cap, to those tubes, they slide down in and create a seal. And they basically create a tube that goes down and then the airflow goes inside of that post and up through this airflow right here. So the way that your coils will sit, you have your positive and your negative. You have your gold block here, which is your positive and the black is your negative and your coil is gonna sit just like that right over top of that airflow tube. So now if we flip it over to the side, you'll see the posts for your coils and that should look really familiar because that are drop style posts. This looks very similar to the posts on the original drop RDA. And when I say that, I mean that of course the coils are installed from the top. There is a little bevel cut out there so that when your leads drop down, you can actually reach in there and clip your leads. However, it's not going to be as easy to clip your leads as it was on the drop RDA because you have a giant airflow tube in the center. So it's not completely freely open. Your clippers will stop when they hit that little tube there. But in a pinch, you could definitely clip your leads after the fact. The other thing I do want to point out is while this juice well does not look that deep, it does have a deep juice well once the top cap is inserted. Because if you look up there, once that post seals off that hole, you have basically all of this room for e-liquid. Pretty much all the way up to here. So you are going to have a really deep juice well only while the cap is on. And of course, once you get past this little line here, 
you're going to be up into where your airflow is. If you fill your deck full of juice all the way up here, it is going to go through the top holes here on the deck. So it's not like you can just literally fill this RDA up, but you most definitely can fill it up to this point here. So it will be really deep, but keep in mind if you over drip when you remove your top cap, all of that e-liquid is going to come running out. The juice well on here is a about, I would say three millimeters. So it does have a lip. Let me turn it to the side for you. It does have a lip there. You've got about three millimeters down here for e-liquid to flow with the cap off. So now let's go ahead and throw a build in this guy. So the coils that I will be using today are going to be the Watelfo Dual Core Fuse Claptons. They should ohm out to a 0.28. It's going to be 226 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge nichrome 80 on a 3 millimeter ID. I'm going to use my trusty handy dandy coily tool. If you do not have one of these, they are really great for cutting your leads. If you'd like to pick one up, here is the information for the coily tool. Go to coilytool.co.uk to pick you one up. Here's all of their social medias there. But I really love my coily tool for clipping my leads. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my leads to a 4.5 millimeter. And also the post screws are Allen key post screws so I'm just undoing those real quick threading feels really nice all of the machining on here is really nice I haven't found any machining issues so far go ahead and do I have that one open enough might need to open that one a little bit more I really do wish the deck was just stainless steel i'm not a big fan of gold and black or coated decks i just feel like that's the one area where it is perfectly acceptable to leave it as stainless steel don't need no fancy colors on my deck now these posts are set pretty wide apart these coils are only like four wrap or the coils are only five wraps, so you could definitely use much wider coils. My coils are automatically going to start spacing as I tighten it down because of the fact that these posts are so far apart. And my coils are not that wide. There we go. I mean, it trapped my leads really good. Everything feels really secure. Go ahead and tip it to the side so you can see the leads poking down. So now I'm going to go ahead and adjust and straighten my coils. And let's take a look from the side. As I can see, I've got one sitting up a little bit higher. And I think I'm going to go ahead and drop them down a little bit. So let's go ahead and loosen those post holes. Just loosening my post screws. And I'm going to go ahead and drop my coils down a little bit more. So just going to press on them a little bit. And I don't want them touching the airflow, so definitely go. Oops. This is one of the tricks of having posts like this that have open bottoms. Your coils naturally just want to drop all the way down and sit on that airflow tube. Just go ahead and tighten them back up. So clearly 4.5 millimeters was long. I could have, um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that one and push down a little bit more. Put my finger on it to hold it because sometimes on this side it'll push up on the coil because you're turning in the other direction. So that one. We'll go ahead and tighten that one. Everything's all tightened down. Again, with my little tool, I'm just going to straighten my coil out, pull it up a little bit so I make sure it's not touching those airflow tubes because those airflow tubes come right at the top of the posts. So we got that leaned out. And here is what it looks like, not touching the airflow tubes, but directly above those airflow tubes, like literally 
there you go. You can see it's not touching the airflow post in the center, but it is very close to it. And here it is on that side. Side view, I just have the coil sitting directly over top of those airflow holes. Now, what about the leads down here? Now, they aren't touching the deck, so I could leave them there. I don't have to clip them since they aren't touching the bottom of the deck. But I'm picky and I don't like seeing my coil leads. So let's see how we can clip them. Let's see if it's easy. So I'm just going to take my flush cutters here and I'm going to put it in there, give it a clip. And where did the coil lead go? The coil lead right there. All right. Make sure when you're clipping your leads that you account for all leads. Don't clip them and let something fall down into the deck. On that side, it ain't so bad. So I'm not going to clip that side. But on that side, I did go ahead and clip and it wasn't too hard. Honestly, um, I can see that over time, I'll probably wear the paint off of the black here from sliding metal cutters in there and scraping around. But it wasn't really hard at all to clip my leads. So that's a good thing. I figured I would have a little bit of trouble. But there is plenty of space to get your clippers in there and clip the leads. So now all we need to do is go ahead, pulse these coils, get them firing evenly, and then we can wick it up. So the mod I'm using to go ahead and check my resistance and fire my coils is going to be the Segele Shikra. One of the biggest things I cannot say enough is anybody out there using a mechanical or unregulated mod always make sure to check the resistance of your coils, fire your coils on a regulated device or a dedicated ohm reader and preferably an ohm reader that can also fire the coils. But if you don't have a resistance reader that can fire the coils as well, then go ahead and put it on a mod. The reason why you always want to fire your build First, on a regulated mod, is so as if there's anything wrong, any shorts, you can detect it before you put it on your unregulated or mechanical mod. If you put an atomizer that has a hard short on a unregulated mod or mechanical mod, you do risk venting your batteries, and we do not want that. So always fire the coils on a regulated mod first. Make sure that everything is firing evenly. Make sure your resistance is reading what you expect it to read. This is coming out to a 0.16 ohm resistance. Let's go ahead and fire the coils. And my coils are firing nice and evenly. They are glowing from the inside out. And after firing the coils, it is reading a 0.17. So that is fine for the battery that I'm going to be using in my mechanical mod. So now that I know that everything is safe, I can go ahead and wick it up and transfer the RDA to the mechanical mod. Make sure your coils are fully cooled down before you use cotton threads. Otherwise you end up with melted plastic on the inside of your coils, which I have done in the past. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip my wicks. Now I do need to leave my wicks a little bit long on this RDA because of the drop-in style posts. There is quite a bit of travel down to the bottom of the well. Go ahead and leave them long. Even those out. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and tilt the RDA to the side here. Tuck my wicks down there in the bottom. There's not much of a lip there, but it is just enough to hold your wicks down. Now you could go ahead and pre-wet your wicks with e-liquid to help those wicks stay down in the bottom there better. So we've got our cotton. That's what it looks like. As you can see, you do have a long line of cotton there. So you are going to be relying on capillary action for it to draw it up just going to go ahead and paint my coils here. I want to be careful not to get e-liquid going down those airflow tubes. So I'm just kind of dripping down the center there. Give it a nice light pulse to pull that e-liquid into the coils. And I've already dripped e-liquid. So as you can see, when you're dripping on this without a cap on it, E-liquid is going to go down into those airflow holes. So I just got E-liquid everywhere. 
but that's okay we'll clean that up go ahead and fire it get them pulsing now I got to clean this up real quick so I'm gonna go ahead and line up that airflow with the airflow tube feel it go into place give it a little wiggle and it will pop down and there we go and that's it can only go on one way so once you feel it you'll be able to slide that barrel down so that is the Pazapati RDA let's move on to the Gendawa mech mod so here is the Gendawa hybrid mech mod up close at the top we do have a hybrid 510 this is not removable if we look down there you can see some more engravings on the top in your serial number flipping it back over to the side. You can see that it does have this slight hourglass figure. Now at the base right here where you will connect your RDA, it is 25 millimeters. Also not sure if I mentioned, but the Pazapati RDA is 25 millimeters. It does flare out a little bit here at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Looking down at the bottom, this is where your switch is. We have some decoration to match the top and bottom. Go ahead and remove the switch. So there is your button and inside is a little adapter. This adapter is for using with your 18650 batteries if you're not using a 2700 or 21700. Taking a look on the inside of the tube, it is not lined. It is 100% metal. There is no coating or lining. So as I say with all hybrid mech mods, please do not use a device if you are not well aware of the safety of the device, meaning that make sure you know battery safety, make sure you're using batteries that are in pristine condition, no batteries with torn wraps or anything like that, because if you have a tear in your battery wrap and it makes contact with this metal, you are going to hard short. So the threads on the inside are smooth. I don't feel any burrs or anything like that. Everything is nice and clean. You can see a little bit of patining going on on the copper, but as far as its machining quality, everything is nice and smooth. Same for the threads on the button. Now here is where I say constant contact. So as you can see, that little contact is raised. And by the looks of it, when I push on the button, you can see that that contact does not move. So that means that your battery is going to be in constant contact with this outer plate and the connection is going to be made on the inside of the button. So on the outer face of the button, you do have this little altum piece covering the inner part of the button. Now let's go ahead and disassemble the button. Now I have not taken this button apart yet, so I'm not really sure See if I got something that can go in there. I'm gonna find a flathead screwdriver. Hopefully I can get this button back together. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the positive pin here. That's gonna come out. And here is the pin. Now it does look to be silver coated. Now I don't think it's solid silver. I didn't see anywhere where it listed it as solid silver. And then here you do have silver contacts. Now to remove this, we need something else. Take our little tweezers to remove this little Deloran plate. Just gonna stick them in those holes. And again, it's threaded. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and thread this. And then we can go ahead and push up to remove the contact piece. So you have these silver contacts that have a rubber band holding them together. Now I have seen another mech mod with this three point contact type switch. So as you can see, when you push up on the button, where's that little switch? So the way that it sits is while it's sitting in here, it's not making contact with those three points. But when you press on the bottom of the button, 
it's going to come up and make contact. So this, it's really hard for me to show this with it not being in the housing. So you've got it sitting like this inside of this Delrin ring. Let's see if I can put that together. I'm not sure which way it goes here. I might have just flipped my disc. Hopefully not. Hopefully this disc is interchangeable. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread that contact all the way into the disc so it doesn't thread any more. Oh, it seems like it will thread all the way through. All right, so let's back it out a little bit. All right, so here is your disc sitting inside the button. Here is the plate. So it's gonna be sitting like this. And when you press on the bottom of the button, those contacts are gonna move up and contact. That's how I think it works. Now, I am not a mech mod aficionado. I have basic knowledge of mech mods. I do not know every single button that is out there, but that's how I think it works. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments. If I am wrong, I definitely don't want to put out misinformation. So let's go ahead and put this back together. So we're just going to take our little plate, drop it down in there, drop this little guy in there, and then we're going to thread all this back together. Get it started with the Delrin here. And da -da -da -da. let me go ahead. What I'm going to do is go back in the order in which I put everything in. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure my Delrin plate here is tightened down as far as it'll go. So that's as far as it'll go. Then I'm going to go ahead and tighten down my contact. And there we go. There's the button reassembled. It has a really, really short throw on it. Not sure if you can see that, but it is very short and very hard for me. I mean, I'm a girl. I have girly fingers. I have weak fingers. It's not even a girl thing. I just have really weak hands. So pushing in on this, very short throw, but it is a very stiff throw. We'll see how it goes when I put everything together. So that is the button and the hybrid mech mod. I am going to be using a 21700 battery. Let's go ahead and see if it fits. So another thing that I do always suggest you do when you're using an atomizer on a hybrid mech mod, always attach the atomizer first, get your atomizer screwed all the way down sitting flush. Because if you do put your battery in first and your button on and then put your atomizer on, there is a chance that the 510 of the atomizer can actually collapse the positive plate there on the top of your battery. So the batteries I'll be using are 30Ts, 21700. Go ahead and slide that in. There's how it sits. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my battery in. And we're just going to go ahead and screw it down. And once I feel that tight, like right now, I feel it's tight. So it's not screwed in all the way. There is a gap even when it is screwed in all the way. There is this little gap. That is the way it is tooled. Let me go ahead and show you when I take out the battery. Do, 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 do. Remove the battery. And we're going to go ahead and screw the button in. You will see the copper disappearing. And you get a couple more turns. So there is the gap with no battery installed. Let's go ahead. And now we're going to install the battery. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I don't know really how much to include with a mech mod. I don't know what all's... Um, I know for me what's important, so I'm kind of like going on what's important to me with a mech mod, as well as trying to think of other things as well that might need to be pointed out. So as you can see, the gap is a little bit bigger, but you are still covered on the copper threads. They're all 
up inside there and covered. So I don't think it looks bad. I think that looks nice. So let's go ahead and put our airflow on and see if it fires. So I, there it goes. So it is firing. So let's go back up top, have a vape on it, and I'll give you my final thoughts. And that was an up close look at the Arjuna mod kit. So what are my thoughts? So first thing I'm gonna go over is the pros. So all around, both for the RDA and the mech mod, it is gonna get a pro on fit and finish. Everything was machined really nicely. Now let's talk a little bit more about the RDA. The next pro on the RDA is going to be the flavor. I get really good flavor on this RDA. And we can't talk about the flavor without talking about the airflow. So the airflow does get a pro from me however this airflow i can see not being for everybody i have it currently set to wide open and i'll go ahead and let you listen So not too loud, but it is a little bit on the more hollow sounding of airflow, and that is with it wide open, and that's where I like to keep it. Wide open, it does have a little bit of restriction to it, and I think that's partly because of the way the airflow is designed. You have this outer hole, and then the airflow has to travel down through the tube, through the side of the post, and back up through the bottom so you do feel that restriction but to me it's a nice smooth restricted direct long Another pro on this device is that it's really easy to build on. It is a drop-in style post, pretty much identical to the drop RDA, except it has an airflow tube coming up through the center of those posts. So they are spread a bit wider apart. So definitely you're going to be able to fit wider builds in here, no problem at all. Now let's talk about the mech mod. So the Gandua mech mod, I really love the shape of this mech mod with that nice hourglass figure it gives it a nice little curve in and then also it sits nicely in my hand and I do have smaller hands now I will say the coating on it is pretty smooth so as I'm pushing on my button my fingers do slide down a little bit but that's also why I like that it flares out at the bottoms because my hand has a stopping point on that little bit of flare there. Talking about the button, the button has a really short throw on it. And the way it comes stock with the O-ring on the contacts, it is a very stiff throw for my hands. Again, I have weak hands. So it is really stiff for me. However, there is another O-ring in the package that you can put on those three contacts to loosen that throw and make it a little bit softer if you're like me and you don't like a really stiff throw. As far as the way that it fires though, it fires really well. I do really like the short throw on it, especially if you're somebody like me that has weaker hands. Trying to push your finger further up into the button can be difficult, so having a short throw is really nice. Also, even though it has a short throw, I can sit it down and it does not auto fire. Now, it does not have a locking feature on this mech mod, so I always would recommend to make sure when you're storing this, putting it in your pocket, laying it down for any period of time make sure you take the battery out of the device simply because there is no locking feature on this mod but if you're just sitting it down in between vapes it will not auto fire as long as it's sitting on a flat surface the next pro is going to be the coating now i did say incorrectly in the download that this was cerakote it is not cerakote it is actually a pvd coating so i guess it has something to do with vacuum and all kinds of and stuff but supposedly pvd coating is used for its long wearability so it is expected that this paint job should hold up quite a long time now also i do want to address the contacts i did say down in the download again i said that it I thought they were silver plated. Now I have reached out to the manufacturer, Ace Vape, and they did ensure that these are solid silver contacts, which is great because the conductivity on this mech mod is really good. It hits 
really hard to me. Now, like I said, I'm not a mech mod aficionado. I don't have every single mech mod out there, so I can't tell you if it hits harder than this or that mech mod, but it does hit hard and quickly, and I'll demonstrate that real quick, pushing the button, and there it is. Now, I do have a .16 ohm build, so it does have a little bit of ramp up time. That's just where I like to build. Anything lower ends up being too hot of a vape for me. So, I vape in the .15, .17 range there for my mech mods and that's where i'm happy at it now i do have one con for this device and to me it's a really big con and that is that the inside of it is not delrin lined or lined with some sort of non-conductive material i really wish they would have lined the inside of that just because when you're dealing with batteries in a completely unregulated or mechanical device the slightest little nick could cause something to go wrong and having that delrin lining on the inside is just an extra layer of protection that i really like to have in my mech mod so it does get a con from me for that Overall, I am really enjoying this hybrid mech mod kit and I went ahead and looked online and it looks like they're going to be around $80 to $120 was the price points that I seen and that's going to be US dollars. So anywhere from $80 to $120 US dollars for this kit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, click that subscribe button. Thanks so much. Bye bye.